burp. The butcher, the baker, the grocer, the clerk are secretly unhappy just because. The butcher, the baker, the grocer, the clerk get paid for what they do but no applause. Well, I gladly exchange places by the by. It's beans and grits for actors, and here's one. There's no business in show business. There's no work to be found. Every seat is empty in the city. Every show is dark and shutting down. We can't even play on people's pity since quarantining won't let us out. There's no people like show people. They smile when they are low. Yesterday they told you you would not go far where you can't take the metro or rent a car. Mitch McConnell says he won't extend our poor pandemic unemployment assistance. Ah, lights up. We need a show. Let's go. created a monster. Hi, Sai. She's back again. Hi, Sai. This is my neighbor, Sai, who lives on the other end of the cul-de-sac. My goodness, you look beautiful. Uh, uh, what are you doing here? I've come to see the opera. The opera? Yes. Oh, no, 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 no. I, I think you've got that all wrong. No, no I'm going to do an aria from an opera as part of a story, but I'm... Mm -hmm, no, it's not, well, that kimono has butterflies and flowers. Did you think I was doing Madame Butterfly? Oh, no. You told me to put one on and come by. Say, <laughs> Sai, <clears throat> si, while you're here, I thought I'd make you, I'll put you to use here. So, uh, do you have friends watching from Japan? Yes, but why? Well, you do speak Japanese, right? Yes, of course. Oh, well, would you mind saying a few things in Japanese to your sure. friends? Sure. Okay, It'll just be my pleasure. Oh, well, just repeat after me because I've got it right here. Okay, so say, welcome to the Alliance Theater Virtual Cabaret. Alliance Theater Virtual Castle Cabaret, hey, Yokoso. Oh, my goodness. The, the theme, the topic tonight is. Kyo no topic wa? Horrible showbiz stories. show business. And and the drink tonight is the dark and stormy. Now get your credit cards and hold it real close while you drink. So have two dark and stormies. Or three. Or uh or five. Uh, now, the Alliance Theater is the top producing theater in the Southeast. And many of their shows have gone to Broadway. So, look in the chat section, you'll see a tip jar. So just click on the tip jar and donate. I want you to fill that jar. So full of money. Too much. Oh, oh, I I guess it was too much. Huh? So, thank you, Sai! <laughs> She's a star! Now listen, I want you to go in that chat and I want you to show Sai some love, okay? Because I want her to come back. I got a whole plan there. <laughs> okay, so here's my showbiz story. So, 
my friend John arranged for me to have an audition for a national touring company of Porgy and Pess. Well, I, uh, this is what happened. I, I, I'll tell you what happened. Go on. What is your name and what will you be singing today? Uh, hi, uh, my name is Terry Burrell. I was kind of nerdy then. I was really young. My name is Terry Burrell. And uh, I'm going to be singing uh, uh, O Mio Babino Caro for you today. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> No, I didn't do that. I continued on, and I made it up as I went along. And my head was commenting as I was singing. Shit, shit, I forgot the Italian. Oh, maybe they will not notice. Too. Yeah, I just want to make sure I heard it well, right. Well, needless to say, I didn't get the job. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? Who cares? It was one of, Porgy and Bess is one of my favorite shows, and I, I could still some, sing something from the show. Come on. Come on. It ain't necessarily so. So the things that you liable to read in that Bible way ain't necessarily so. Little David was small, but oh man, David was small, but oh man, he fought. Yes. 
should have sent me Oh, okay, you know what? Bef I I'm gonna, uh, this is what, because I almost forgot to do this. T it's time to give away the t-shirt. Hey. See the t-shirt? <laughs> One day I'm gonna do that and break my leg. <laughs> so, here's the trivia question. And the first person to put the answer in the chat wins this wonderful t-shirt. Okay, so here it is. What instrument do I, Terry Burrell, play? Is it the harp? Is it the piano? Is it the oboe? Or none of the above? They don't sue us for using that. <laughs> we'll hey, did, they, did anybody come up? Did anybody come up with an answer? Huh? Oh, all right. I don't know. I don't see what that. So I guess they'll tell us later on, right? That works. Okay. Well, what are we going on to here next? Okay. All right. Well, why don't we do close to? How about works for me. Or something else was supposed to come here, right? Okay. We just sold your arm. <laughs> oh, never mind. Oh! Hey, Trinidad, you got time to talk to your old friends. Oh my God. Who is that? Uh -huh. Is that Chris Kayser? Yes, it is, my queen. Oh, but you know, for those of you out there who don't know who Chris Kayser is, he is like one of the most prolific actors here in Atlanta. And you, Palais pour Francais? Oui, je parle français, oui, absolument. Oui. Oh my gosh, he does. Oui, well, oui. Oh, this is just amazing. Chris, how many years did you play Scrooge in, in Christmas Carol? Uh, yeah, only, uh, only uh, let's see, 17 at the Alliance, uh, three in other plays, but 30 years in the play overall. Played oh, everything in the good wind. grief. Well, listen, mm -hmm. I got a very important question for you, Chris. Yeah. <laughs> uh, are you wearing any clothes? Uh, are you talking about pants now? Oh, well, I don't know. I have, I, it looks like you don't have anything on the top. You don't have anything below either? Beach, Terry. But I haven't worn pants since March 13th, so why <laughs> should I say that? Yeah, okay. Okay, so, um, hey, come on, Chris. I know you've got a horror story or two. Oh, please, we got, I, I could stay here all night. But okay. in particular, I'm thinking of uh, Christmas Carol in the late 80s. And uh, uh -huh. that time is being played by a, a wonderful... Uh, uh, English actor named Roger Forbes, right? So play stars like, oh, it's, it's in Scrooge's office, and then he goes down the street, and then he, he's going into his bedroom. And, uh, you know, at the you know at the Alliance Theater, they do everything big. So here comes this giant set rolling out in a giant wagon, and it, it has a, a giant flat on the front of it representing the outer wall of his sink. And this thing is filled with tricks, you know, of course, Marley's face, chase lights, uh, flashing lights all over the place. And uh, so uh, four cables come down and when Scrooge walks into his bedroom, the four cables fly the flat out and like magic he's inside. So cool, except that, uh, you know, this time, uh, you know, week three, show seven and uh, the cable on the end does not connect. So the thing, this thing starts up and the whole flat just starts slowly oh. bending over. <laughs> Acting. It's full of electric, so there's sparks flying everywhere, you know. So, of course, Roger Forbes runs away. We're all standing in the wings. And uh, we see it bend and bend and bend. And we know it gets that second cable. If the second cable breaks, it's going to go, you know. So slow, 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 slow. Pop. Here comes the entire set crashing down onto the stage. And it's just a huge pile of smoking rubble, you know. Stage manager comes on and says, we'll be taking the 15 intermission. Yeah. And they can't come out with snow shovels and trash cans, and they load it all up, you know. And then, uh, so finally, when, when we're ready to go again, Roger Forbes, a great old veteran actor, you know, he just brings down the house. He comes out, he's about to go into the bedroom, and he just coolly turns to the audience and says, as I was saying. <laughs> and he totally falls out in tears. And <laughs> that is fantastic. 
you know something, Chris, I'm sure that when I, because, you know, people can play this back. Um, yeah. I'm sure that I will find it even more amusing. But I was a little distracted because I keep thinking that you're naked. And that's, like, really distracting to me. Are you really naked? Come on. Are you really naked? Terry, there's nothing, there's nothing shameful about the human body. I mean, uh, you know. Yeah. Okay, yeah. You are and naked. I got to tell you that, uh, you want to see? I'll show you right now. Oh, oh no, no, no. You're going to yeah, show we'll us that you. you're Cause, naked? Because I got nothing to hide, Jerry. Okay? Oh. Yeah, let me. Ah! during Christmas Carol. You know, we did. And we, we all, in our, in our Christmas Carol outfits, went through the back door and were standing there in front of the Marta station. Great. And people were walking by, you know. I should have asked for some money. Right. <laughs> but, you know, speaking of being, you know, one thing about being naked is that you certainly can get close, can't you? Mmm. That sounds like a song. That's one transition. Richie Cranfield is going to get his wish. What's my note? Why, why do birds suddenly appear every time you are near? Just like me, they long to be close to God, I knew it was a bathroom. I was hoping you weren't sitting on the toilet. <laughs> I do my best work there. Terry, we, I have good news. What? We have our winner. Oh, who's our winner? Holly Branigan was first with none of the above. Holly! <laughs> okay, Holly, here's how you get your t-shirt. Email amanda.watkins at alliancetheater.org. It should be going across right now. Don't forget to email it. Congratulations, Todd. This oh my is God. official. It's, it's like, like we're on the Today Show. We are. <laughs> but wait a minute. How did we meet? We did Ever After together with we Chris Kayser. Yes, with Chris Kayser. We sort of, oh my God, that was, that was so wonderful. That's when I met you. Tell me what Buonapane means. That's your last name. My name, yeah, Todd Buonapane. Buonapane means good bread in Italian. Yeah, and That's baby. why I can't do a low-carb diet. So wait a minute, I know you got a horror story or two. Oh, uh, I mean, I have a dozen. But, and then you're um, gonna do a song for us, right? I sure am, I sure oh, am. Oh, go, take it away, baby. So here's uh, my story that I like to tell. I was auditioning for a new Broadway show called Ooh. Angels. Okay. And what we found out later is being produced by 
evangelical Australians, which I didn't even know was a thing. thing. Yeah, Sounds like an I guess it's a thing. But it was uh, a rather religious musical that every time I got a new script got more and more religious. But I was auditioning to play one of the demons of Satan. He had like three funny sidekicks that were his demons. And I was auditioning for more the demon of gluttony. So <laughs> first we have like a dance yeah. audition and it's all like the chubby boys in New York dancing. Mm -hmm. And we have to like and roll on the floor and it's nonsense. But I am the Kate Moss of the audition and I'm the only one that can get up off the floor once we roll on the floor. So I'm like, this job's mine. Um, so then the last thing we do in the callback is we are brought in the room three at a time to just have this meeting with the director. And the director <laughs> looks at us and he says, I want you to come up to me one by one. Look me in the eye, don't say a word, and scare me. <laughs> what? What does that mean? So the other two people in the room, and I'm like, you first. And the first person gets up there and just stares in his eye like this for about three minutes. And I'm not exaggerating. And I am now breaking into sweats and having heart palpitations. I don't want to do this. It's making me very nervous. I don't know this human being. Great. The next person gets up, stares at him even longer, four minutes. And he's like, after four minutes, wonderful work, Todd. And I get up there and I'm like, I do not want to look at this man. I do not want to look at this man for five minutes. So I look him in the eye for five seconds, grab his head, turn it and lick him. And he Ew. goes, very brave. <laughs> Did you get the job? I got the job. Of course, hey! we, rehearsed. we rehearsed for three weeks and they lost the money and sent us home. But, uh, you know. Okay. It was well, all we one got... giant horror story, which I will never people. forget. Yeah, I'm sure you'll never, I'll never forget it either. <laughs> Will you do a song for us? You know, every week uh, Todd does a, what do you call it, bathroom theater? Bathtub theater. It's classier bathtub. than bathroom Excuse theater. Me, bathtub, I know. Yeah, so. I, I was on tour when the pandemic hit, and so uh -huh. I got sent home, and that first night I sat in my tub and did a monologue from Lost in Yonkers. And since then, I have done 71 performances of female material <laughs> in my bathtub. Okay. Take it because away. Because I don't get to do normally. So here's one you'll know, I'm sure. I got 36 expressions, sweet as pie to tough as leather. And that's six expressions more than all them Barrymore's put together. Instead of just kicking me, why don't they give me a lift? It must be a plot. Cause they're scared that I got such a gift. Well, I'm miffed. Cause I'm the greatest star. I am by far. <laughs> but no one knows it. Wait, you gonna hear a voice. A silver flute. <laughs> They'll cheer each today. He's a soprano when I expose it. Now, can't you see the look at me that I'm a natural Camille? As Camille, I just feel I've so much to offer. Kid, you know I'd be divine because I'm a natural coffer. <coughs> Some ain't got it, not a lump. I'm a great big clump, a talent laugh. <laughs> They'll bend in half. Did you ever hear the one about the traveling salesman? A thousand jokes, stick around for the jokes. A thousand faces, I reiterate. When you're gifted, then you're gifted. These are facts, I got no ax to grind. Hey, what are they blind? In all of the world so far, I'm the greatest star. Who is the pimp with pizzazz? Who is all ginger and jazz? Who is as glamorous as? 
who's an American beauty rose with an American beauty nose and ten American beauty toes. Eyes on the target and wham! One shot, one gunshot, and bam! Hey, Susan Booth, here I am. I'm the greatest star. I am by far, but no one knows it. That's why I was born. I'll blow my horn till someone blows it. I light up like a light, just up like a light. I'll flicker and flare up, all the world's gonna stare up. Looking down, you'll never see me. Try the sky, cause that'll be me. I can make them cry. I can make them sigh. One day they'll clamor for my drama. Have you guessed yet? Who's the best yet? If you ain't, I'll tell you one more time. You bet your last dime. In all that all world so far, I'm the greatest, greatest star. <laughs> ah, bravo, Viva! Woo! Woo! Honey, better you than me. <laughs> Catch his bathtub theater. Bye, And you Todd. know the best part of a tub? It has a curtain. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing happens like that in my bathroom. But, mm, let's not talk about your bathroom and what might be happening in there. Okay, now listen. Before we move on, it's time for my joke. Yep, yeah, that's right. Uh -oh. I tell jokes and I laugh at my own damn jokes. Okay, so. These two elderly couples are having dinner together, right? And so the, uh, the, the ladies go off to wash the dishes and the two old guys go in the den and they're talking. And one says to his friend, he says, you know, me and the missus, we went to a restaurant last week. The food was pretty good and the prices, they were really cheap. He says, yeah, what was the name of it? He says, uh, it was, uh, uh, oh, geez, geez, I can't remember. Uh, give me the name of a flower. What, daffodil? No, 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 no. What's, what's, what's another flower? I don't know what, you know, daisy? No, 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 that, no, what's that? What's that flower that's red and you give it to your sweetheart on Valentine's Day? He says, Rose? Yeah, that's it. Hey, Rose, what was the name of that restaurant we went to last week? <laughs> yeah, and I laugh at my own damn jokes too. <laughs> you think something's gonna be happening? Well, you say you know, hey. you know, this whippersnapper, he's a whippersnapper. <laughs> Christian. Yes. I know that you've got a, uh, a story. I got a story a week, but I'm gonna oh, fast, honey, I'm gonna yeah, rewind it. It's only a half hour show. <laughs> so 2014, 2014, uh, I was doing uh, Shrek the Musical, and I, and I played Donkey, because you know, I like to make an ass of myself. Huh? And, you uh, say it. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, this is about maybe week two, week three of the show, and I'm still like pretty young at the time, so I don't, I, what I had not perfected yet was learning how to sit and sing. He's and only 26 <laughs> now, so you imagine? It's pretty, it's pretty bad. And so I was singing real hard and real heavy as I was standing up, and I sang it. It was in the middle of, of the closing number called, uh -huh. uh, closing number of Act One called Who I'd Be. It was okay. me, Shrek, and Fiona. Donkey comes in at the end, but he's still, like, he's still pretty powerful. So Donkey comes in, he sings all alone and holds it. I don't know what happened, but 15 seconds later, I am opening my eyes <laughs> and I am on the floor, just sitting. And like, everything's like coming to me. I'm like, man, they are really singing. <laughs> Oh my God, I'm supposed to be singing right now. I should probably stand up and sing. And then I stood up and the song was over. But the funny thing, the funny thing was our stage manager didn't even notice. I said, did you see me fight on stage? He's like, I thought you just 
took a moment to sit down and think. I was like, on my back. <laughs> in, the, in the middle of the show? In the middle of the show. Oh, good grief. That reminds me of the time I was playing Mrs. Mears in uh, um, uh, Thoroughly Modern Millie and had a cough and mixed caffeine with uh, Robitussin. Oh. Ooh, that good. <laughs> Sad, boo, you know what? You know, I'm, I'm going to tell you, I, and I, I'm, I've been debating, I'm kind of putting you on the spot. That's fine. But I've been thinking about you this week, and I thought, you know what you remind me of? You remind Denzel me of Washington. Was that not it? That wasn't it. <sighs> he just really, turned 26. This is really awkward if that wasn't it. No. Okay. <laughs> You remind me of Sam Cooke. Do you know who he you is? Know, I, I know who he is. That, I grew up on Sam Cooke. Did you really? Oh, yes. I know all the jams. Oh, man. Would you happen to have Yes, some? I do. I do. You could tell we didn't plan this. And I'm actually singing this from experience. <laughs> this is another Saturday night. <laughs> another Saturday night and I ain't got nobody. I got some money because I just got paid. Now how I wish I had someone to talk to I'm in an awful way Listen I got in town a month ago Seen a lot of girls since then I can get them, I can get them And yet I haven't met them That's why I'm in the shape I'm in Ooh, another Saturday night And I ain't got nobody I got some money cause I just got paid sight Now how I wish I had some chick to talk to resemblance to a cat named Frankenstein. Ooh, another Saturday night and I ain't got nobody. Oh, yeah. I got some money cause I just got paid. No they extend unemployment. No no Again, no, no, they're no not going to do that. Yeah, that's what it is. But how I wish I had... Oh, man, it's Brenda Baxter. Oh, Perry! Who is that? Brenda? Perry. How, yes, how much do I got to wait? I've had people <laughs> stock and dormies. You had st three what? Strong and dormies? Strong and dormies. I had three strong and dormies. The drink of the drink. Everybody, this is Brenda Braxton, the Hi. diva. Hi. Brenda, oh. you wouldn't. I can't believe you're here. Do you know what I was just reading today? What? Your book. Oh, yes. oh my gosh. Is, is it by just uh, a coincidence that you happen to have that pillow, uh, that uh, towel on your head? Yeah, I know. It's hot. It's too hot. It's too hot. It's too hot. Ah! Too hot. Ah! Not you, girl. Yeah. Brenda, Brenda wrote and published a book called The Little Black Book of Backstage Etiquette. Yes, I did. Yes. Oh, wait. I need light. I need light. <laughs> Here we go. So listen, Brenda, let me ask you something. Okay. No. What would you, if you had to pick the one thing out of this book, that you really wanted performers to know. And, and, and you can't just say young performers because I've worked with some older ones that could use this book. True, They true, shall true. remain nameless, yeah. but <laughs> unless true, they... True, true, true. What would you say? What would you say it is? I would say uh -huh. if you were in the, in the dressing room with each other, uh -huh. because now with cell phones and all that kind of stuff, baby Ooh, people are child. like, who yeah. till the place is called? I don't understand. Yes. I don't understand, Terry. Well, you know what I don't get? I don't get, and I've had this happen with veteran performers, after half hour, shut up and let people concentrate. Exactly. That's when you don't need to be playing your music, watching movies, singing. No. Nope. Nope. <laughs> oh, and speaking of being quiet, if you're given a note, shut up and take, take the, the note. note. There we go. Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. That's a good one, Carrie. Yeah, That's yeah, yeah. Good. Ooh, do you really have a dark and stormy in there? Maybe. Ooh, What's the good. point? <laughs> so tell me... <laughs> Brenda, <laughs> tell me, tell me your showbiz horror story because I know okay. you got them, girlfriend. Okay, I was thinking about. I got two, two quick ones. So the okay. first one okay. is when I was doing Smokey Joe's Cafe with the feathers and everything, singing Which song one. You got a Tony nomination for. Yes, I did. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, so there I was singing Don Juan, and a feather got caught in my throat. <laughs> And I literally had to vamp, and I reached down into my throat and pulled out this nasty, wet feather. That was one. And then the second one was on the road with Chicago the Musical. You know, 
we have Velma has one of the best entrances. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Coming up in the elevator, right? Well, halfway up, my elevator got stuck. <laughs> so it said. <laughs> And I was like, oh my God, what are we gonna do? So the guys had to come and literally lift me out of the elevator. And you You know something? I saw you three times in Chicago and I saw you about four times in Smokey Joe's Cafe. And um, I bought my tickets. Oh, okay, that's how you like that. Are. And you like that. Friend. You like that. Uh, would you happen to have a song for us tonight? Oh, I do. Ooh. <laughs> Hot in here. Well, so you know, my first my first Broadway show was Guys and Dolls. It was the all black version of Guys and Dolls with uh -huh. Robert Guillaume and Kim Page and Ernestine Jackson. And she sang Whew, If I Were a Bell. And I love uh -huh. that song. So I think yeah. I'm gonna do I that. Love for Ernestine you. too. I love yeah. all these people. Is that good? Can I do yes. that song for you? Please. Yes, of course. Didn't Here Christian lay the track for you, I think? He did. Thank you, Christian. And my Ask me how to ask me. Ask me now that you're cold and cold. Well, sir, all I can say is if I were a girl, I'd be ringing. Come over to the sky. If I were a lamp, I'd light. And if I were a banner, I'd wave you as we had a rocky little music, my quiet upbringing. Well, that's all I can say is if I were a king, I'd be screaming. And if I were a watch, I'd start popping my springs, yeah. If I were a bell, I'd go ding dong, ding dong, ding. Change choreography. Ask me how do I feel from this chemistry lesson I'm learning. Well, sir, all I can say is if I were a bridge, I'd be burning. Yes, I knew my morale would crack from the wonderful way that you look. <laughs> if I were a duck, I'd quack. And if I were a goose, I'd be cut. Ask me how do I feel? Ask me now that we're fondly caressing. Oh, if I were a salad, I know I'd be splashing my dressing. Ask me how to describe this whole beautiful thing. Yeah, if I were a bell. Oh, if I were a bell. Oh, if I were a bell, I'd go ding. <laughs> Brenda Braxton, you are insane. Mwah. Good night. Love thank you. You. I love you too. <laughs> that was brilliant. Christian literally went to the floor and my dog growled at him. <laughs> That's how funny that was. Well, I think we're at that time, don't you? Absolutely. You know, I before I go, I gotta give you a, I gotta let me thank, let me thank a bunch of people. My friend Bobby Day, or my friend, as we call him, Bobby Boo Boo Ray Ray, who lives in New York City, wrote those special lyrics at the top of the show for There's No Business Like Show Business. He's so wonderful. I'd like to thank my co-host here, Christian. I'd like to thank Sai. Sai! She is fantastic. And if she agrees to it, I got something real special for her for the next one. But it's up to her. And anyway, I want to thank uh, Susan Booth, of course, who without her, none of this would be possible. Um, I'd like to thank Chris. I'd like to thank Todd, Brenda again. Thank you, Tanache, Amanda. Thank you, Jacinia. They're all backstage. You can't see them. 
thank you all so much. Don't forget to go in the chat and click on that tip jar. We really need you. Oh, you know what? They just announced a new season, and I am going to be a big part of it. <laughs> so you better tip that tip jar over, honey, because I need sets, lights, and, you know, costumes. Okay. <laughs> yes. Maybe next, next one I'll do a Christmas song. And uh, tune in next week for Courtney's show. I can't wait to see what her mom made. Last week it was uh, egg salad sandwiches. I wish there was a way virtually to like send them. You know, this week, this is my Auntie Terry moment, okay? I was going to uh, do something completely different. But today, we put a beautiful man to eternal rest. Congressman John Lewis. Uh, no matter what side of the fence you're on, one thing you could say about this man was his kindness and his respect for all human beings. He didn't care if you were Republican, Democrat, if you were an independent, it didn't matter. He was a very humble man and he got so much done. And I thought, you want to talk about a man living during uncertainty? <laughs> he, he certainly knew he was going to get his butt wet when he, when he marched across that bridge in Alabama. But I thought that I, I would like to say his words to you tonight. This is somebody who lived 80 years on this earth, my dear, okay? He said, when you see something that is not right, not fair, not just, you have to say something. You have to do something. He also said, if you're not hopeful, not and optimistic, you just give up. You have to take a long, hard look and just believe that if you're consistent, you will succeed. And finally, this is one that speaks to my heart because it's how I feel. This is my philosophy in life. We are one people with one family. We all live in the same house, this earth. And through books, through information, we must find a way to say to people that we must lay down the burden of hate and rage. For hate is too heavy a burden to bear. That is my Auntie Terry moment. Hate is too heavy a burden to bear. That video that you saw earlier today I don't know if they'll have time to play it at the end. But those, that was my sister, uh, my sister Debbie, my sister Priscilla, and my sister Carrie. And when we were kids, we used to sit out on the front stoop because the bus used to stop in front of our house. And we were such hams then, buskers, who we were busking. Well, no, we didn't actually get money for it, but we would wait until the doors opened and people were stepping off, and we would start singing that song. <laughs> you think I was a ham even then? <laughs> anyway, my darlings, Thank you so much. Good night. I send you all virtual hugs and virtual kisses, and I can't wait until I can do it in person.